I'm in the midst of a series right now entitled, It's On. Somebody shout, It's On. It is, and please put this in your notes if you don't mind, a vision series. This is a vision series. Our goal is to unpack how when I say it's on, it is not just a statement, but a commitment to taking your life from expectation to execution. When I say it's on, it is not just a statement, it is also a commitment to taking your life from expectation to execution. Now, I'm going to say this, and only three of y'all going to catch this. Who's expecting something? See, that's why I missed 9 o'clock service already. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whoever y'all is, we started late. Y'all don't even know how to have church. Are you expecting something? At 9 o'clock, we almost tore the whole church up because you don't have to have nothing to be around me, but you at least got to expect something. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I expect God to do exceeding and abundantly. I'm expecting that God's about to send a blessing with my name on it. I'm expecting that what the devil meant for evil, God's getting ready to turn it around for my good. I can tell what you're expecting by how you praise him. Because if you got little praise, that means you got little expectation. But if you got big praise, that means you got some big expectations. Somebody ought to shout, I expect. And you got to be careful when you hang with people who got expectation. You got to be careful when you sit next to somebody with expectation. Because somebody who's expecting something is always ready. I ain't preaching to everybody. I'm only preaching to three of y'all who check your online banking like you expect something about to drop in there. I'm only preaching to three of y'all who woke up this morning and said, you know what? I know it's going to be crazy, but I'm going to deal with the traffic because I expect to get a word that flips my mind. Like you ought to shout, I expect. And that's how you're going to walk this year. Your walk going to look like expectation. You ain't, cre- you ain't sneaking into no job interview. You walking through the front door. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, how you doing? Oh, that's where I get my coffee from right there? No, because I'm walking like I expect. You have not because you act not. I've been faithful. I've tithed. I've sold. I've been praying. Now I've done my part. Now it's time for God to do. Somebody shout, I expect. So when I say it's on, it is not just a statement but rather it is a commitment to taking your life from expectation to execution. That, that's so critical. That, that's so critical. Why is that so critical, man? Because so many people expect. You saw how the church just went crazy? Bruh, bruh. I expect. I expect. Who's expecting? But who gonna execute? Nah. Nah. No, I'm shifting from expectation to execution, from expectation to execution. Please put this in your notes. You got your phone out? I'm going to give you notes. We're going to shout, but I got to give you something of substance first because we become a generation of people who sit on substance and shout on foolishness. So if I tell you a house coming, you tell your row up, but if I tell you to fix your credit, you don't say nothing. When fixing the credit is execution. Execution. In your notes, I want you to write execution. Under execution, I want you to put a one and a two. Because execution kind of covers two definitions to me. Execution means to put into action. I'm going to execute this agreement. I'm going to execute this contract. It means to put into action. I am ready to put this thing in motion. But then the second one, if you look on Greco-Roman times, to execute means to kill. Michael. So execute can mean one, put in motion or two, to kill. And I've discovered there are two types of people sitting on your road. One of y'all need to put the plan in motion. Some of y'all got the plan. It's some stuff you need to. I'm preaching to somebody already. Hear me. So somebody say, execute. What's the plan? October 22nd. That's today. 
October 22nd. You're going to leave church. Okay, I got to be, I got to, I got to preach to everybody. You're going to leave church, get in your car, turn on Christian music, speak in tongues all the way home, and you're going to put the plan together. Okay, let me go to somebody else. You're going to leave church, get in the car, ski. Then put the plan together. I don't care which one you do. But before you go to bed tonight, I want you to put the plan for 2024 in motion. Because this year we getting ready to... I need somebody in overflow to jump up, sit down, and shout, execute. What's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? plan? I am so excited because one of my assignments in this season is to call my people. And when I say my people, that is not a race, that is not a gender. I'm not saying it possessively, I'm saying it protectively. So whenever you hear me say my people, whoever listens to me, to some I may just be an inspirator, an inspirational speaker, to some I may be a pastor, to some I may be a spiritual father, to some you just may like me. Whatever it is, if you come in this room, watch online. To the people God has entrusted into me, We're starting today, putting 2024 together. We execute. (laughs) No announcements this year. But what you gonna do next year, you'll see. Y'all missed, that was a swag and you missed it right there. What your plan is for next year, you'll see. Cause I told you last year and didn't do none of what I told you I was gonna do. This is the year I moved from expectation to execution. What's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? Listen to your pastor. Listen, listen. Hey, Rock City Church, we just got a new church, right? Here's what I want to do. We can keep having church in Forestdale, but I'm going to have to keep raising all these extra offerings. And times are hard. So do you want to come to church right now? And every Sunday hear me say, well, if I can have 50 people, just do so-and-so. Or can I close my church? for six months and we stay home and I be responsible and we do it all. Everybody said, you might not have a church when you get back. Because God will bless, put put this in your notes, the plate over plan. So when I say execute, here's a question I need you to ask yourself. Bruh, what's the vision for 2024? What's the vision? What's the vision? Helen Keller said the only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision. What's the vision? We're going to get to the money. Cool. Cool. What's the vision? Oh, you know we're getting married this year. Cool. You're going to spend six months on the day and no time on the life? Don't meet with me no more and tell me how much you spent on your wedding. And you can't tell me how much you spent on your marriage. What's the vision? Why, PMJ? I want to give you a definition. What's vision? Let's define it. What's vision? Let's define it. What's vision? Let's define it. Vision, hey twins, vision is a picture of God's preferred future for your life. That's what I mean when I say vision. Vision is a picture, snapshot, of God's preferred future for your life. You know why some of us will never be happy? Because your plan don't match his vision. I need to say that better. My granddaddy here is called Syntax. You want to know why some of us are always miserable? Because our plan don't match his picture. And his picture is what? The vision. That's my God. If I ask you what's the vision right now, you're going to tell me your plan. Have you talked to God about it? Ooh. Have you talked to God about it? Well, Pastor Mike, what's your vision? Well, I'm going to start a business next year. I'm going to do so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. What God say? What, what, what God say? Because I need you to catch this. 
the preferred picture, vision is a preferred picture of the future that God desires for you. Come here, Gideon, who's in a wine press. God rolls up on Gideon, and he tells him, this is enough to tell the whole church up, hey, Gideon, oh, valiant warrior. Ying shout. If I was at a Baptist church, we would have told the church up. See, I have to act all the sermons out for this church right here. Now, Gideon, oh, valiant warrior, why should I shout about that? Because Gideon had never fought a day in his life. Gideon was basically a farmer. God walks up on a farmer and calls him a warrior. Or in other words, whenever God calls you, he gives you the picture in the calling. Michael! No! He called him something he wasn't because he realized, I'm almost scared to say this, there was more in him. I'm going to say this, and you ain't got to say amen. I'm going to preach to this side because I think they still sleep. There's more in you. Oh, my God. I'm going to have church by myself right here. I, I, I'm not trying to be bougie. I'm not trying to be arrogant. But lately, I've been irritated, aggravated, and don't know why. Because God called me to do more than wake up, go to work, pay bills, and die. There's more in me. I, I, you sit next to a hater and don't even realize it. So reach over that hater and high-five somebody else and tell them there's more in me. You ain't got to see it. I see it for myself. God put something in me that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, but I've been so busy messing around with y'all that I'm about to miss my season for my vision. It's my season to execute. And many of us will never properly execute. Brother, we will never properly execute because we're in the wrong place. All right, you got your phone out? Overflow. Y'all got your phone out? All right, do this for me. Put this in your phone. If you old school, do I got anybody who still write notes? Where you at? D please, lift you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I want to say this from the beginning. I want to say this, okay? This part that I'm going to tell y'all was so deep to me and my brother when we wrote it. So when I say it, even if it's not deep, I just need a real good, mm, mm, okay? All right. Hold on. Let me go back over here. Hold on. Bruh, bruh. Because there's certain stuff that won't happen because you're in the wrong place. I would like to... That, that, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. It's the principle. Wait till I get to the principle part, okay? Hold on. Let's start over. It's the principle part. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right. Bruh, bruh. Bruh, bruh. Because there are certain things that won't happen because you're in the wrong place. I would like to introduce what I call the principle of the place. How I give you the answers and you still missed it? <laughs> Put that in your notes. The principle of the place. What is the principle of the place, Pastor Mike? The principle of the place suggests that I cannot become the right person in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm preaching today. Mom, I'm preaching today. I cannot become the right person in the wrong place. Michael, I cannot become the right person in the wrong place. Y'all gonna laugh at me. Y'all gonna laugh at me, right? Y'all gonna laugh at me. I wanted to do something crazy. I wanted to do something crazy, even if I had to pay for it myself. My dream was to have palm trees all around the church, right? I want you to come to Rock City and it felt like Miami. Like, as soon as you came down the streets, I wanted palm trees. Then you know how they put the lights on the palm trees? Oh my God, I have found the people who did it and my crazy self got the bill, right? I was like, cool, cool, um, no, we're gonna do that. Let's get them. I said, okay, okay, if that's how much the grown people palm tree, how much the baby palm tree that can grow? I couldn't afford the tall one, but I was gonna get the little one. In, in 20 years, it was gonna kill. If we were still here, it was gonna kill, all right? So I'm like, yeah, I wanna do palm trees and the dealer messed around and asked me where to ship them to. I said, well, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. He said, mm. he said, now my boss is gonna kill me. He, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I wouldn't make this purchase if I was you. I said, why? Because the ones we have require a certain place. <laughs> Y'all missed it. He said, these are kind of for like Florida and you know, Cali. He said, your weather is too fickle. One bad winter 
may take these out. He said, and to me, you'll lose all your money. He said, now, it's my job to sell them. Watch this. He said, now, if you want them, I'm still going to sell them to you. I said, let me call you right back. And I started thinking about how many of us keep making bad investments in wrong places. I'm going to say this and seven of y'all going to catch it. That's why some of y'all think you're not fit for a relationship, baby. You good. You was just in the wrong place. Y'all miss what I just said? Some of y'all was through with church. I don't do church no more. No, baby. God still has a plan for you. You just have to find the right place. And I'm here to tell you that it's hard to become what God desires you to be if you're not in the right place. Why you changing? Why you changing? You don't even come over anymore. I'm sorry. Y'all was the wrong place. No, no. I love seeing people in the right place. I got a chance to hang with the mayor of Irondale during his festival and to see him love on his city. I'm like, God, he in the right place. I like going to Kobe's and, and Hibachi restaurants and seeing the people at the thing and they roll up real cool, right? They roll up real cool, boom, roll up. They say, hey, who got this? Boom, who got this? Boom. And they put the little thing down, then they put the fire, whoosh. They put the fire down, then they make the sound. Then they put all the food in there and they be cooking and flipping stuff and I'll be sitting there like bruh had I had his job I would have burnt the whole place down see some of y'all life's on fire because you got people in your space who in the wrong place Michael and hear me what's the vision question number two are you in the right place Because being in the right place, you, can you put this in your notes? Am I doing okay? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here it is. My well-being, I'm going to say it slow. My well-being is not just determined by who I am, but also by where I am. Can I ask you a question? You so busy. I need to run it back. Let me, okay, I'll run it back. Okay. Y'all say, hey, man. What'd he, what he say? What'd he say? <laughs> What'd he say? What'd he, here it is. My well-being is not just determined by who I am, but where I am. It's the place. Where am I? Am I surrounded by people who level me up? Yeah. God, we, we've been singing Impossible for years, right? Everybody who's been rocking at the rock for a while, y'all know we've been singing that song forever, right? All right, so it came time to make it an actual song. All I had was a melody. That's what it sounded like. I walked in the other room and was like, James, can you put some words to this for me? Y'all missed it. I didn't have to go looking, watch this, because my place was equipped with people who helped my vision. Can I ask you a question? If you do an inventory of your space, are there people helping you or hindering you? I'm preaching the three of y'all, whether y'all receive it or not. Hear me, hear me. So I had to make sure the people in my life benefit. Now, now I want to I say this. I want to say this. I want to say this. I think we have to, and I'm praying about doing a series on it called The Death of Loyalty. Because I think we put a negative definition on loyalty that suggests if I pick me, I'm wrong. Or if I decide that your toxicity it's too much for me. I am now loyal and disloyal because I chose to distance myself from your foolishness. Y'all miss, miss what I just said right there. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. If God took his hand off Saul, 
what make you think you got to keep your hand on Keisha? I love you, but if you ain't trying to be who God called you to be, if you decide to ruin your life, I'm going to let you do that. I'm not even going to hate on you. I'm going to cheer you on from over here. But as for me in my space, y'all, y'all, y'all just missed what I just said. Am I preaching to anybody? To illustrate the danger of being in the wrong place, one has to look no further than a very familiar Lucan passage in chapter 8, 15. Because it is in chapter 15 we see a text that we can take and make applicable to our lives. It is only in verse 15, chapter 15, that we begin to see Jesus tell parables. He tells a parable of a lost coin, a lost sheep, and a lost son. It's in the book of Luke. A lost coin, a lost sheep, and a lost son. Jesus tells the parable of the prodigal son so well, you think he a real person. Uh Uh-oh. The prodigal son is not a real person. Jesus was having a conversation and had to tell a story. And he said, there was this one sheep, and he left the 99 to go get it. Then there was a man who lost the coin. Then he said, to illustrate this point further, that one man, this can preach, had two sons. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. One man. My granddaddy here, too? I'm a preach. One man had two sons. That right there can preach. It's right there on the screen. It says, a man had two sons. Now, here's my problem with how people preach this scripture. Because the story emphasizes the mistakes of the younger son, we give the older son a pass. When if you think about it, both of them lost. Y'all don't like me. If you look at the text, both of them are lies. One of them are lost because he's unrighteous. He living wrong. But the other one is lost because he's self-righteous. He think he holier than thou. Y'all don't like me. If I was in Forest there, we would have had church, but you're dignified now, so I'm going give, give to give you a pass. One of them is unrighteous. He like, give me my money. I'm ready to go. I don't want to be here no more. Give me all my stuff. I'm ready to get out here in these streets. I'm outside. That's what the younger son said. The older son looks at him and like, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He's self-righteous. One of them unholy, the other one holier than thou. And as I look at this stream, I look at overflow, and I look at this crowded church, I ain't scared of y'all. Now that I look at it, sometimes there's two types of people in this house. Yeah. Yeah. One of y'all bad, but the other one in sin because you think you better. Okay, can I, can I have a real moment, Shayla? Can, can I be honest? I'm a pastor, right? I'm a pastor, and I made a decision. If I had to pick between which sons I like, I think I like the worst one. See, I can deal with somebody who tell me, Pastor Mike, I'm coming to church Sunday, but I might not be here next Sunday. It's classic weekend, and I'm going to start turning up on Thursday. Thursday, I'm doing so-and-so. Friday, I'm going to Ricky Smiley. Then we're going out. Then we're going to be outside. Then Saturday, we're waking up, and we all going to brunch. We're going to go to brunch at IHOP, right? We're going to go to brunch at IHOP. And then we're going to go, we ain't going to go in the game. We're going to go down there by the game. We're going to get toe up. It's going to be ridiculous, the level of foolishness I'm going to be on. I'm telling you right now, Pastor Mike, I'm outside. Me and my boys already got what we got. I'm going home with some. I'm, I'm going to act a fool. And I'm going to watch you online Sunday. But the Sunday after that? See, I can deal with that type of member. I can't deal with y'all, I can't deal with y'all big Bible carrying, holier than thou. How you doing today? Blessed and highly favored. It's hot. I didn't ask you that. I can't deal with people who act like they something that they're not. And I'm on, I'd rather have somebody who can say, look, be patient with me. God ain't through with me. I'm not telling you it's okay to be bad. But at least be real. At least be real. And and he says, one son, one, one son, one son came to his daddy, the younger son. This is critical. That's what the scripture says, Leslie. The scripture literally says, and the younger son. 
said to its father, give me, that's critical, the younger son, Paul's parenthetically digress, put this in your notes and we'll deal with it on Devo Energy. Everybody jump on Devo Energy in the morning. It's going to be crazy, okay? Listen to me. I, I can't really deal with it like I want to, but to all my scholars and people who love to read and challenge the Bible, here's something that we have to examine. The Bible never tells me who's the oldest numerically. The Bible calls him the younger son, but it never says the one that's 20 and the one that's 26. It only says younger, which makes me ask the question, is he younger because of immaturity? Because there's a difference between physical age and mental and emotional age. See, you 50 because you had 50 birthdays, but a lot of y'all 50, 20. Y'all miss what I just said. <laughs> Some of y'all 45, 19. Talking about mama got to have a life too, Jody. You 56, 23. But then conversely, some of y'all 22, 63. Because you young, but you had to grow up so fast. See, so the Bible says the younger don't think he's young because of age. What if he's young because of emotional and psychological? If you see me and my brother standing outside, you might assume my brother's older than me. D carries himself a little bit more settled than me. I'm drippy. D ain't that drippy. No, D most, you know, D is more, D is more matter of fact. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm more, what up, fool? It's just different. You get what I'm saying? It's just different. So you would think D was the oldest because he kind of more settled. That proves that younger is not always numerical. Okay, okay, okay. Because, let me say this right. Physical age is counted by birthdays. Psychological and emotional age is measured by emotional habits. emotional habits yeah so so he goes to his daddy right he says daddy it's the scripture it's right there on the screen give me this is cold-blooded give me I want my share of the estate before you die all right Rock City Church you got to be careful especially in relationships business partnerships relation anything romantic relationships friendships because there's a difference between what you say and what people hear Yeah, like she, she can ask you, how this look? All you can say is, it just look a little tight. She might hear, so you saying I'm big? Because it's a difference between what you say. Am I preaching to anybody? <laughs> and what you hear. What did he say? I want my estate. What did his father possibly hear? you won't hurry up and die. Because you only got the inheritance upon his death. In Jewish culture, the only time you got the inheritance was after the funeral. So in essence, what he's saying is, this is why the scripture says, I want my share of the estate now, it's on the screen, before you die. Give me what you promised me, and I don't want you... Ain't it crazy how people will want what you got, but not necessarily want you? Are y'all going to help me preach this up top? I, I need somebody to help your boy preach this. No, ain't it crazy? In other words, he's saying, I want your stuff. I don't want you. Y'all got to pray for me. Y'all got to pray for me. God ain't through with me yet. Let one of my sons walk up to me and say, Dad, I just saw your life insurance policy. Yeah, go and give me that now. I'm just so ready to get away from you. Not the, I'm so ready to get away from you. I'm so ready to get away from you. Give me my stuff so I can leave. It's going to be some furniture moving in my house. No, no, I'm going to show you how. It's going to be like, what, say that again? I'm ready to go because I want to make sure he heard what he said. No, give me my stuff now. You mean to tell me that there were days when I wanted to go home 
but I'm out here killing myself so you can have food? That, that for years I wore no brand shoes and I had to wear the same three jeans, but you was walking around here in fresh joints? You mean to tell me that I took stuff from bosses that I wanted to strangle and the only reason I stayed on them jobs was because I knew my family needed some stuff? You mean to tell, do you know how much better I stuff I could have did if I could have just took care of me and you got the audacity to come look me in the face and say you want what I got but you don't want me. But the father teaches us a principle that many of us need to apply in our life this evening. If they want to leave, Now, I want to give you context. He's not talking to a 13-year-old who's just mad. He's not talking to a 17-year-old who think they're grown. He's talking to a cognitive adult who's in his father's house who wants independence and the inheritance. Okay, okay. Who think he a fool? But he sound like us. Hey, God, if you don't mind, bless me, but you stay off. <laughs> That's for six of us who praying for favor, but then we want to do what we want to do in the midst of it. No, he says, give me mine now. Give me mine now. I'm finna get you home. Y'all tired of me? And he takes it. Now, here's what messed me up. If you go back to verse 12, can you throw verse 12 on the screen because I want them to see this, man? Verse 12, the younger son told his father, I want my share of the inheritance now. So his father, I'm finna tear the church up. I'm finna run. This may be my first shout in the new building. I didn't say this at 9 o'clock because I just saw it when I looked at the scripture, okay? I'm gonna read it and see if you see it, okay? The younger son told his father, I want mine now. So his father agreed to divide his wealth. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed y'all shout. I'm going to say it again. The younger son told his father, give me my stuff. The father said yes. Then he divided it between both his sons. Y'all missed it. Who asked for it? Who got it? Now let me show you why you should shout. The younger son got his money, but he lost his father. The older son got the blessing and covering. I I'm preaching to three of y'all. And what's the use in being blessed if it ain't covered? I'm going to say this and only two of y'all going to catch it. God, if you don't do nothing else for me this year, when you bless me this time, make cover my blessing. Because you gave me money last year and I don't know where it's at right now. I decree and declare covering. I dare you to take your right hand and just wave it over your neighbor and shout, you're covered. Your family's covered. Your job is covered. Your mental state is covered. Your children are covered. Your body's covered. Your car covered. Your house covered. You ought to just wave your hand and shout, cover, cover. Ooh. He, he. The oldest son, Michael, now I'm finna free you, okay? Xander's driving now, right? Xander's driving. So Xander will pull up. We, anywhere we go now, he act like he can't ride with the family, okay? Xander, we finna go get something. To eat. All right, cool. I'll meet y'all there. I'm like, Xander, just get in the back seat. No, Dad, I'm gonna just drive. I got my kid. I'm gonna just drive. I'm like, cool. So Xander called the audible, right? Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. I know y'all finna go get something to eat or whatever, um, but we were thinking about um, going to Cheesecake. I was like, all right, man, I just wanted to kick it with y'all, but I, all right, man, just do your thing, man. All right, I love you. All right, man, all right, all right, all right. Then Mike says, I'm riding with Dad. All right, all right, so that's how Mike, Mike said, I'm riding with dad. I, I said, cool. All right, so, so then we get to our restaurant, get to our restaurant. Problem was, I gave everybody some money at the top of the week, right? Gave everybody their money. We get to our restaurant. We eat, we laugh, we having a good time. My phone rang. Dad, what y'all eating? I said, we went to right there, right there, the Longhorns, right there on 280. We just eating a little something. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, boom, Thursday roll around. Dad, you think I get some gas money and something for lunch today? I said, where your money at? Well, you know, we went out to eat. I said, Mike, where your money at? Right here. 
<laughs> I said, Mike, why you got money and Xander don't? He said, because you gave me the money, but I stayed by you. Y'all miss what I just said? And I don't know who I'm preaching to. You can keep all the money, all the houses, all the cars. Just give me my father. Because the Bible says my father is rich. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I almost went to church right there. I'm only preaching to three of y'all who done ran out of money, but you didn't they run out of God. That God did more for you than you ever could do for yourself. You ought to jump up, sit down, and shout, God, come for me. He, 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 and he, I gotta go. I got seven minutes, right? He cover seven minutes, seven minutes. The younger son said, "Give me my money." Daddy says, "Cool." Divide it down the middle. He divided down the middle. Booyah! Give it to his son. Look at verse twelve. He gets it. Altercation. Verse thirteen. A few days later, he leave. Separation. Go back to twelve. Verse 12, I see an altercation. They get into it. Verse 13, I see a separation. You want to know what frustrates me? Because in between verse 12 and verse 13, why was there no conversation? One, see, this is what, when I get to heaven and I get a chance to talk to Jesus, I'm going to say, Jesus, you told a cold story, but I got a problem. In between verse 12 and verse 13, you don't tell me how many days that was. So do you mean to tell me he was walking around the house mad? And you walking, and the daddy walking around the house in pride, and ain't nobody talking to each other? I'm finna run. Because you do know one conversation could have changed the whole thing. You don't believe me, okay? I know this, I know this dude from around the way, right? I know this dude from around the way who got caught in the act and got caught stealing, and they put him on the cross, all right? Him and his other partner was two thieves. They on the cross. Just, I'm finna, just, just yeah, yeah, you caught that real quick, didn't you? I, I know this brother from around the way. Him and his partner stole, robbed this bank, right? They robbed the bank, but they got caught. Once they got caught, they got crucified, put on the cross. But just so happened the day they got crucified, Jesus got crucified too. All right, so, so on Jesus' left is a thief, and on his right is a thief. One of the thieves look at Jesus and begins to mock him. Both of them decide to have a conversation with divinity. Y'all miss what I just said. This one says, you're supposed to be God. You ought to just get down from him if you're really who they say you are. But then the other thief realized, I don't got that many breaths left. I'm having church by myself. So I'm going to have a conversation. And he looks at Jesus and says, when you come into your kingdom, Michael, remember me. Y'all miss what I just said. He could have sat there and just thought about his mistake. But he said, I'm not about to allow this moment to be missed. I'm going to have a conversation. And he says, when you come, when you come to your kingdom, remember me. Then Jesus says, if he crazy enough to talk to me, I'm crazy enough to answer. Then Jesus says, today, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, now, now y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed, missed, missed it. This thief died and went to hell. This thief walking around in paradise. His whole life might have been jacked up, but one conversation... Can I speak this? And if I speak this, you ought to jump on your feet. You are one prayer away from God changing your whole life. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Let everything. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm one prayer away. One prayer. One prayer away. Hear me. I got to go. Three minutes. Three minutes. Y'all going to let me borrow three minutes? Nobody say nothing. Nobody say nothing. And he get his stuff. All right, I'll holler at y'all. I won't be back. Yeah, you stay in there with daddy. You was always his favorite anyway. No, I'm out here. Bye. Bye. Won't see me again. Won't see me again. And the scripture says he took all his belongings, 
to a distant land. Ooh. And there, he wasted all his money. Pause, put a pen in that. He wasted his what? Money. Did his daddy give him money? No. His daddy wouldn't have gave him money. His inheritance would have been livestock, cattle, land, deeds. His daddy handed him 40 acres over here, 35 cattle, some over here, maybe some coins. And he took his inheritance and he pawned it. Michael. And uh, see, and you don't get this because whenever you pawn something, you do not get what it's worth. You get what you can. Michael. That's why you might need to think back on certain people who are in your life and realize they probably wouldn't have been in your life had you not been in the place you was in because they caught you at a price that you really... I got to go. I got to go. I got to go because I'm going to turn up. I, I got to go. And he pawns his promise. He pawns it. I've been there. I ain't have nothing starting this church. I ain't have nothing. I would, take, I would take a paycheck, personal money, and pay all the musicians and not have nothing to eat. Bankrupt twice. I would take everything I had. They would tell us, hey, we got to get musicians this week. I would take the TV off the wall. Go right there on Roebuck Parkway to the pawn shop. Pawn it, get about $300. Walk in church Sunday, I'm like, how much I got to pay this musician? 100? Boom. How much you get? 100? Boom. How much you get? 100? And be smiling. Because sometimes you just do what you got to do. Yeah. Right there off the exit, 133 Kilgore Memorial. I had good parents. Had I told my mom and dad I was struggling, they would have did whatever it took that took care of me. But I was in pride. I didn't want them to see me like that. I wanted to prove to them that I could handle it. And I, you know what? I'm at exit 133, the Rhyme Garden Inn off Kilgore Memorial, every Friday, rolling quarters, trying to get money to just stay another five days. I know what it's like to be priceless, but on sale. <laughs> Smiling at stuff that ain't even funny. Stopping by people house trying to wait on them to eat because you know if they eat they gonna let you eat Oh, I know what it's like to have three jeans and five shirts and you iron them jeans so many times that they start shining in that joint priceless But on sale and I didn't come to preach to everybody who always had it I came to preach to three of y'all who can be honest with yourself and say there were certain seasons Where I just had to do what I had to do I'm not proud of it, I'm not happy about it, but my back was against the wall and my prayer life wasn't as strong as it should have been and my circle wasn't as strong as it should have been and I put myself in some back, outside and alone. He got all his money and it's up. When I say it's up, it's up. When I say it's up, it's up. He got all this money. Hey, drinks on me. And everybody in the club. Yeah. Hey, I'm going shopping. Y'all coming? I tell you what, let me get a shirt. You want a shirt? You want a dress? You want some shoes? Everybody. <sighs> then verse 14 says, help me, Holy Ghost. About the time his money ran out. <laughs> Circle got small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to see if you catch this. Let me see if you catch what I call. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. You missed it. Give me another version. Give me the NASB version. NASB version 1995 revision says, Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country. Do y'all see what I see? Do you see what I see? What you see? Okay, I'm going to tell you what I see. The Bible almost makes it appear as if the famine is tied directly to his finances. Because the Bible says when he ran out, the country ran out. Y'all, y'all, y'all miss what I, y'all, y'all, y'all miss what I just said right there. That's why certain people would treat you better if they realize if you ever run out, we run out. I'm preaching it. Your family would be a whole lot nicer to you if they realized the favor rested on you. 
And because the favor rests on you, everything around you. Now I'm gonna say this. There are doors that open for me that shouldn't have opened for me prematurely because I was connected. I walked in certain rooms and they would say, hey, how you doing? And I would purposely say, hey, how you doing? God bless you, Mike McClure Jr. I met you once before with my grandfather. Who's your granddaddy? Bishop Cal, man, come on in here. So the prosperity was tied to a person. I want to say this, and only seven of y'all going to receive it. I won't run out. I got that mouth shot talking. Somebody should have had your hands lifted right there and said, he talking to me. Matter of fact, you ought to declare that over your own life. I won't run out. No, you don't believe it. You still sitting there like you got everything you need. I need you to put your faith on it and just shout, I won't run out. I dare you to just lift your hands to heaven right there and shout, I won't run out. I won't run out of finances. I won't run out of peace. I won't run out of joy. I won't run out of creative ideas. I won't run out of business plans. I won't run out of resources. I won't run out of gifting. I won't run. You ought to shout, I won't run out. I won't run. Rock City, overflow, online, I won't run out. You wanna know what's crazy about saying that? You just said it out. <laughs> you standing in here like, I won't run out. But in the back of your mind, like, it's already ran out. <laughs> but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. <laughs> no, it's seed. gonna declare that over your life. I won't run out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I won't run out. I won't run out. I can't tell y'all. I so didn't want to be a burden to my church. There are times when I might need to say, hey church, I need y'all to help me. But for the most part, I was like, I'm gonna keep trusting God, keep trusting God. Y'all have no idea. There would be certain weekends where I ain't have nothing to do, nothing. Then lo and behold, not even have a clue, T-Mobile got a tower on top of Central Park phone ring. Hey, we've been trying to find y'all for like two or three years. We got a tower on top of y'all Central Park building. I said, what'd that mean? Uh, we gotta give y'all a check for it. <laughs> I turned real bold in. No, I've been looking. What, what's going on with that? Can I speak to your supervisor? This is unacceptable. <laughs> I turned real 280. This is unacceptable. <laughs> they say, no, Knowing when y'all got the building, we didn't know who was who. So we just got a check waiting on you. It'd be $60,000, Then I would look and tell the finance team, go fix the children's wing. Because I realized even, ooh, see, when I told you to say, I won't run out, that ain't the I you think I'm talking about. Because there's another one that says, I can do. So, so when I say I, I'm not talking about your bank account. What I'm saying is, even if your account is sufficient, heaven still has overflow. I won't run out. I won't run out. And you got to believe that. That to all my creators and you sitting at home trying to come up with that idea that's going to flip your life and you feel like you keep hitting the wall, then you go on, see this is how the devil play. Then you go on Instagram and see somebody doing what you just thought about. Then you get discouraged. No. There's more. God didn't stop giving out ideas when he gave you the first one. You got to lay hands on your head and say, I won't run out. He empty. And he sees a phone. He says, hey, 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 man, I see you got a whole lot of stuff out here. You mind if I work for you? The scripture says he went and hired himself. I like the other translation. It says he's persuaded a local farmer to hire him. Persuaded means he practically begged. He's a son begging. A son begging. That's what pride would do to you. All he had, 
He's a son. His daddy got more than this farmer. But look at pride. Hey, hey, man, can, hey, hey, I see you got them fields out there. Can I go work in them? No, nah, I'm good. Man, come on, man. Please, please. I said I'm good, man. Get off my property. Man, I do whatever it takes, man. I'm telling you, I'm good in the farm. I used to work on the farm. I, I know somebody who used to have a farm or whatever, and, and I can do whatever you need me. Man, get out. Man, come on, please. Man, I said leave me. Man, please, please, please. i tell you what. i tell you what. You can feed the pigs. That's an insult because the brother in this story is a Jew. And culturally, Jews couldn't eat or touch swine. He says, I tell you what, you want to do something? What you see is a job. But what it meant to him was, turn your back on your faith. <laughs> and now he's feeding pigs. They would eat in the house, dump it out the window, he would carry it, half eaten food, just dump it in the trough. Pigs would eat it. He would go back to the window as people would leave the house, and he would be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, y'all got anything left in there? Get to the field. Go to the field. You don't believe me? Look at the scripture. But no one gave him anything. He's feeding pigs hungry. And the next scripture says he looks at what they eat. I'm like, man. <laughs> and as he's dumping it, can't you see him? It's maybe a half piece eating of chicken. Some turkey meat or something he's looking. And he's looking back at the house. Then verse 16 is enough to tell the whole church of when he came to his senses. Can, can I ask you a question? In elementary school, they taught us it was how many senses? Which one was it? Did he reach in there to touch it? Because touch is a sense, right? So did he reach in there to touch the food and it was so disgusting? He jumped and was like... I looked at my hand. Was he about to eat it? Hearing? And somebody in the window was like, ugh, look at him. And he heard. Taste. Did he actually eat it? And then as he tasted it, he was like, did he look at it? It couldn't have been sight because that's what his job was. He looked at it every day. Can I tell you what I think it was? You ever seen a person get knocked out and they have to put the stuff on his nose? And fellas, what'd he do instantly? <laughs> Part of me feels like he was dumping it and moving. Dumping it and moving. Then just when he was about to get in it, it hit him. <laughs> and he came, he got a whiff of his reality. Rock City Church, I know it's late and I know we got to go. But do you know what it's like to get a whiff of your own mess? <laughs> it's crazy because if you got, like, if you ever need a breath mint, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody will literally, if my mama does this all the time, she just will put it in your hand. Don't even talk to you. She would just literally say, you just be standing there, all of a sudden she'll grab your hand and you think she's being emotional. Then you open it up, you be like. <laughs> you can't ever smell it, but the people around you do. Right, don't laugh when I say this. But how many of you have ever had a day where it hit you? Where you literally said, ooh. <laughs> he came to his senses. Now, I'm, let's go home. Senses, sense. Something triggered his sense. 
all right? If I had time, I would play with this thought. This is just my personal thought. What possessed this mind that got broken in that moment? Because something snapped. He came to his senses as if he was separated from his sense. And he said to himself, at home, even the higher servants have food enough to spare. And here I am, dying of hunger. Next verse is enough to tear this church up. I will go to get up, Michael. This is what he says. He says, I will get up. Y'all yeah, missed it. Because you get to a certain place in life where you can't wait on nobody to do for you what you can do for yourself. <laughs> Baby girl, he said, I will get up. Go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I will get up. Can you stand with me all over the room, even in overflow? I want you to stand with me right now. Can you take somebody by the hand right there? Because today your day to come home, man. Today your day to come home. Every head bowed. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that it won't take tragedy, calamity, scandal, poverty, injury to make us come to our senses. I pray in the name of Jesus that a lot of us still have a lot of growing to do. But in this moment, we come to our senses. God, I ask in this moment that you will do what only you can do. So God, if there's a place of pain, heal it. If there's a place of fear, give them strength. God, if there's a place of doubt, build their faith. God, I thank you that you kept us this far. Haven't been perfect, haven't always made the right decisions, but God, older now, I can firmly testify, you've been better than me. Ooh, than I've been to myself. God, you've been good. Even when I wasn't good, God, you've been good. So God, right now, we welcome them home. There's somebody in this room right now that maybe you don't know Jesus. Pastor Mike, I just came, I was invited. But honestly, man, hearing you talk today, I wanna give my life to Jesus. Honestly, I don't know what would happen if I walked out that door right now and things didn't go the way I needed to go. I just want you to squeeze that person's hand you're holding right there. Squeeze their hand right there. Or maybe, Pastor Mike, I need a church home. I'm being honest with you, Pastor. I'm out here, man, and I feel spiritually lost between YouTube and my friends telling me all type of crazy stuff about the history and what's this and what's that. In my heart, I feel like God is the only way. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. I need a home, man. Squeeze that neighbor's hand. It's real easy. Or maybe you hear you say, but you just need to rededicate your life to Christ. Hear me when I say this, man, that Pastor Mike, I gave my life to Jesus. But every now and then, I just need to refocus, get myself back. I've been, I've been watching you online, but truth of the matter is, I ain't been as locked as I should be. Like, I need to be in church. I need to be around people. I need days like today. Just squeeze your neighbor's hand if that's you. <laughs> yeah, that my mind shut down. If you had somebody squeeze your hand, can you just lift that hand in the air right there? Look at God, man. Lift that hand in the air. Father, in the name of Jesus, I see you all over the room. Even in overflow, I see you right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I touch and agree. Fresh starts and new beginnings. I speak fresh starts and new beginnings. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, for those who are giving their life to Christ, if they can repeat after me, I confess with my mouth, I believe with my heart that you rose from the grave with all power in your hand. And right now, by faith, I am. Can we give God a shout of praise right there, man? Yeah, my
at the phone. Listen to me before you leave. I just want to say, I want to say this, and you can hear my heart when I say this. I gave a prophetic word this morning. There were some supernatural shifts and alignments happening. And I wanted to share that with you guys, that I really feel that in the spirit, God's shifting and realigning things. Don't be surprised when you end up becoming close friends with people you thought you would never be close friends with. Don't be surprised when certain circles you were in, they shift you to the back of that one, but you move to the front of another. Don't be surprised when certain job opportunities come, watch this, that aren't even in the field you do, and you didn't even go looking for it, but through conversation, they kind of came. What am I saying? I'm not saying that that is always God, but what I am saying is there are certain doors that have closed in my life in the last four months, and in the lobby of those doors, I met people who are changing my life. Y'all miss what I just said. Sometimes God takes you to a closed door because there's somebody at that door he needs you to meet to take you to the right door. And hear me when I say this from the depths of my heart. I mean this. He's realigning some things. I, I really want to say this and hear your pastor when I say this, man, from the depths of my heart. What's the vision? As a people, what's the vision? We have war happening in Israel and Palestine. There's so much going on over there. Not too long ago, government was on the verge of shutdown. I'm telling you, things are happening real crazy. The interest rates are going up again. Listen to your pastor. We cannot become just a people who shout on Sunday, but are ignorant Monday through Saturday. So hear me when I say this, man. I am asking you today, October 22nd, October 22nd, October 22nd, October 22nd, 2023, what's the vision? And I'm asking every member in this church, if you have any honor and any respect for me, at some point today, if y'all gonna go eat, don't just talk about how good church was. At that table today, pull the phone and I say, okay, what's the vision? All right, let's do it together. What's our vision for? What are we trying to do? How are we trying to make it happen? All my fellas, give me a roo-roo. Fellas, listen to your boy, man. We got to get a vision. We got to get a vision. We have to get a vision. In the next two weeks, I'm sitting down with all three of my big boys because I got to share the vision that I have for them with Mason. He just finished his ninth grade season. He has one more game. Had a big year this year. We sit down. Okay, what's the vision? I'm telling you, no, you're going to go sit down. You're going to go talk to coach. As soon as the season over, you're going to ask coach for a one-on-one -on -one meet. You're going to ask him what's his plan for you. They got you playing both sides. You got to pick a side. You're going to do so-and-so, so-and-so. Mace, this is what I need from you. Mike, it's super simple. We're meeting people this year. My son wrestles with Asperger, so part of his autism spectrum is social. He doesn't like meeting people and doing it. He likes his circle, his circle. So what we've been saying now is, hey, by the end of this year, I need you to sit at three lunch tables that you normally don't sit at. So I'm, I'm trying to put vision before them. You got me? Vision before them. I bought a vending machine. I saved some money from one of my concerts and bought a vending machine. And I put that vending machine, it's going to be in Michael's name. And that's going to be his business. So what I'm doing with my three boys is all three of them will have a business that one of them will run, but the other two have to work for the other two. That way they can learn how to run one and serve in one. You see what I'm saying? So hear me. I went on Facebook Market. We went on Facebook Market, bought a bouncy house. That's one. Bought, a, bought a, uh, a, a vending machine. That's one. And we're thinking about what we want to do with Xander. And say, I'm trying to put vision before him. And hear me when I say this, church, we put so much emphasis on praise breaks and not enough on helping people become better outside of church on Sunday. <laughs> hear me. My grandfather, my auntie, their generation, my uncle, they got us rights. We have to move now from civil rights to silver rights. Did you catch what I just said? That hear me, Dr. King was killed because he was trying to give finances to people. And what I'm telling you now is, as you leave here today, if we're not careful, we leave church saying we had good church but don't remember nothing. I want the last thing you heard from your pastor on the biggest Sunday he could have was, what's the plan that God got for you? And how can we come together and make that happen and be all that God called us to be? Because I'm going to say this, and only three of y'all going to catch it. I'm not going to run out. Who can receive that in Jesus' name? Anybody? Can you receive that? If you're giving today, you know how to give your offering. I'm not going to hound you over that. You can text IROC with the amount you wish to give to 28950. Where are my tithers at? Throw your hands up, tithers. 
You can text to give I rock with the amount you wish to give to 28950. If you want to give on your way out, I think they may have receptacles in the back. Uh, they have a vest on. You can give that way. I certainly thank God for each and every one of you. I love you. To everybody who sat in traffic, hear me when I say this. It means the world to me. It, that's why when you saw I was out there trying to direct traffic, I'm walking through the halls trying to figure out where I can get stuff from. I think I found a couch in a room over here. I said, y'all, y'all get on the couch. That's the VIP couch right there. You sit on that VIP couch. It means the world to me. I don't take it for granted. I love you from the depths of my heart. Thank y'all for letting me be me. That means the world to me, man. Just thank you for not putting pressure on me to be something that I'm not. And you allow me to be myself. And that means the world to me. I love you so much. Were you blessed today? Come on, were you blessed today? Okay, do me a favor. If you have a child in Children's Church, do not go to brunch and try to come back and get them. You go get your child. The moment I pray, I want you to go get your child. Have somebody leave a child at 9 o'clock. Then Tom said, we went and got some breakfast. No, this ain't free child care. Go get your child. In Jesus' name, all right? Every hand lifted, I want to pray a special prayer. Lord, your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. I love you. We are. I'll see y'all next Sunday. God bless you. Wow, we are Rock City. I, I, I got to say something. I won't run out. I won't run out. Somebody is watching online. You need to put in the comments, I won't run yes, out. Yes, God. Listen, we yeah. are so incredibly excited about all that God is doing. Yeah. This is just a sneak peek. Thousands of folks made their way to Birmingham today. Thousands. From the north, south, east, and west. Hundreds of folks stood in, in lines, Ooh. traffic. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's that I'm at a loss for words. It's, yeah. When you really look at all that God did, like I said Goodness earlier, gracious. he exceeded our expectations. Yes. You know, he did more than we would ever Woo. think or imagine. And to see so many people, lives who were changed, you yes, could see God. the all that was in the room. You could feel the presence of God in the room. And it's just really been an amazing. Listen, if you were blessed like that, yes, some of you say, you know what, James, I want to become a part of Rock City family. Uh, I want to give my life to Christ. It's very simple. All you got to do is text home. Home to 28950, and we will get you the information that you need. That's home to 28950. And of course, like Pastor, we're not going to yep. press you on an offering. You know what you're supposed to do if you're That's giving right. today. How can you do that? Absolutely. You see the information on the screen. You can text I rock the amount to 28950. You don't hear a word like that Ooh. or experience yes. a day like today and not get seed in the ground. Absolutely. Pastor charged us coming out of today to think about the vision. What is the vision? Yes. Not just for now, but 2024 and the future. Yeah. And so this is a part of the vision that God yeah. gave Pastor Mike. Yeah. And so I believe that if you sow, you sow into what, where you want to grow. Yes. So if you sow here, we're believing that God is going to give it back, press down, shaking together, and run it over. Because we ain't going to run out. We won't run out. Yeah. That's, that's one way to sure fire proof that makes sure that you won't run out because the more you give to God. Yeah. Listen, grandmama more, would say you can't beat God's can't beat giving no matter how you try. Yes. And listen, James, I am so excited because we got some new drill. We have oh, yeah. some new merch. Yes. The merch store is open. It's so open. be sure that you stop by. So that way when you're out, when you're at work, when you're at the grocery store, when you're at the gas pump, yeah. you can represent your church and do it so proudly. Absolutely. And also, family, don't forget tomorrow morning, we're going to be on Devo Energy. D, you ain't even saying it right. Give me the energy. Give me the energy. You ain't ready. I'm out. We will see you tomorrow for Devo mm. Energy. Yes. Starting at 721 on Facebook and on YouTube. Be sure that you subscribe, yeah. right? Because every time we go live, you want to be that tapped notification. in. notification, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fall Festival's coming up. That's right. October 30th, uh, right here at Valleydale from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's the Fall Festival from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're going to have a great time. Food, fun, games, yes. bring the kids out, put your costumes on. We're going to have fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Again, I'm going to win best costume again this year. Okay, so who you coming as this year? I can't year? tell you because you're going to try to steal it. Okay, gotcha. I was Prince last year, though. You were. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, listen, we pray that you Tony were blessed Dennis. by this word. Um, look, sharing is caring. You late. can share this message on the replay. We yeah. want to make sure uh, that everyone associate, associated to us, with yeah. us, has an opportunity to hear it. 
Man, God is doing incredible things, and we're just excited to be a part of it. Yes, we are. Family, don't forget, once again, we will see you tomorrow for Devo. Bright and early. For Devo Energy, 721 AM. 721. Central Standard yes, Time. Yes, sir. God bless you. We love you. Peace. Peace.